In this video, I'll be showing you how to thread the white ESP Model 4000 sewing machine, as well as demonstrating some of its features. I recently picked this machine up at a local thrift store for $19.99 Canadian. What attracted me to it was its small size. While it's no featherweight, it only measured 6 inches deep and 12 and a half inches tall. Let's open it up together and get the demonstration started. For portability, the extension table is folded up, but just slide it to the left and fold it down. The on and off switch is on the back of the machine. The ESP4000 features a variety of stitch pattern designs. Reverse stitching, stitch length adjustment options, sewing speed control, the ability to drop the feed dogs, and much more. On the bottom of the extension table, there's helpful hints in case you lose your instruction manual. There's also a dedicated area for storing your bobbins. So handy. Or so handy. You can operate this machine with the extension table on, or you can lift it off to use it in free arm mode by lifting it up slightly and pulling it off and towards the left. Start by pulling up the retractable spool pin. Push in the hand wheel. Just a warning. If you turn on the machine with the hand wheel pressed in, three lights, a red triangle, a green triangle, and a green circle will flash. If this happens, turn off the machine and pull out the hand wheel, then turn it back on again. You'll be good to go. Place the thread on the spool pin. Lead the thread down through the thread guide at the top side of the machine. Wind the thread around the bobbin counterclockwise several times. Place the bobbin on the hand wheel spindle. Press the foot pedal to start winding the bobbin. Once your bobbin is established, you can snip off the hanging thread. I would have expected that pulling out the hand wheel would automatically stop the needle bar from moving up and down. However, that doesn't seem to be the case with this machine. I'm not certain if it's just because something on my machine is broken over the years, or whether that's by design. If you have this machine, I'd love to know how yours behaves, so let me know in the comments if you have a spare minute. This machine does not automatically stop when the bobbin is full, so be sure to monitor your bobbin carefully. Do not overfill it. There are three choices of speed to wind the thread, or operate the machine in general for that matter, so feel free to change the speed if you want it to fill faster or slower. After doing some research online, I learned that it was one of the first, if not the first, computerized sewing machines made by the White Sewing Machine Company, produced in the 1970s. Snip the thread and be sure to pull the hand wheel back out. How to insert the bobbin. Remove the bobbin case from the sewing machine by first raising the needle to its highest position, then flip down the cover. Hold the hinge latch of the bobbin case while you pull it out. Hold the bobbin case in your left hand and your bobbin in your right. Hold the bobbin with the thread leading out counterclockwise and place it into the bobbin case. Lead the thread through the slit and underneath the tension spring then through the thread guide. Leave about four inches of thread from the bobbin. Replace the bobbin case while holding the latch of the bobbin case. Make sure that the notch lines up at the right hand side right here. Threading the upper thread. Start by making sure the thread take up lever is in the highest position. Place your spool of thread on the spool pin. Guide the thread to the thread guide, then lead it down the front of the machine between the two tension discs to the metal guide at the bottom. Draw the thread towards the left, then back up to the thread take-up lever. Thread the take-up lever by leading the thread from right to left. Guide the thread back down to the needle bars guide, from left to right. Then thread the needle from front to back, leaving a 6 inch tail of thread. To draw up the lower thread, hold the upper thread with your left hand and push the lower thread pickup button with your right. Pull the upper thread gently and the lower thread will pop out. Pull both threads under the foot and towards the back. You're ready to sew. Choosing your stitches. On the stitch selection panel, there are two columns of stitches. The left stitches, colored green, are stretch stitches, and the right stitches, colored orange, are the standard stitches. To use the orange standard stitches, Line up the little red marking on the dial with one of the stitch length numbers, between 0 and 4. The bigger the number, the longer your stitch. To use the green stretch stitches, 
Turn the dial until the green solid dot lines up with the green outline dot, which is to the left of zero. To choose your stitch pattern, just press the little button next to the design you want to use. To start sewing, press on the foot pedal. The first row allows you to make buttonholes, but you'll need the buttonhole attachment, which I don't have unfortunately, so I can't show you how that works. The second row is what you'd want to select to make a straight stitch. Rows 3 to 5 are your zigzag stitches. You'll notice that this machine does not feature a stitch width adjustment option, so the stitch pattern you select has its own preset width that cannot be adjusted. Rows 6 and beyond are more stitch selections. Most of the discussion I found online about this machine was regarding broken gears, but luckily this particular machine does not seem to have that issue. For most materials and thread types, you want a thread tension between 3 or 6. However, if the upper tension is too tight, turn the thread tension dial downward in the direction of the arrow. If the upper thread is too loose, turn the thread tension dial upward in the direction of the arrow. Inside the face cover, there is a lever for adjusting the foot pressure. For normal sewing, keep it at 2. For elastic materials or thick fabrics, set it to 1. And finally, set it to 0 for darning. If you're sewing very thick materials, the foot lever can be lifted up even higher than usual to give a wider space. You can use interchangeable presser feet with this machine, at least the presser foot. Then center the bar of the foot you want to attach and lower the presser foot into it. If you want to attach an entirely different foot that doesn't feature the bar, you can also use a screwdriver to switch them up. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed by this sewing machine. Despite being from the 70s, the computer inside is still going strong. For such a small machine, it folds out nicely to a full-size workspace. Overall, if you have the chance to pick up this machine to add to your sewing machine collection, and it's in working order, I'd say go for it. As I mentioned earlier in this video, it looks what gives people the most problems with this machine is broken gears. Be sure to fully test it out before purchasing to make sure that you don't have an unexpectedly expensive repair on your hands. Overall, I'm looking forward to playing with it some more in the future. I hope you've enjoyed watching this demonstration of the white ESP Model 4000. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you could leave me a thumbs up and a comment to help support this channel. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave me a note in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching. This is Craftcore signing off. See you next time.